Hello and welcome back to Pommy and Oz. Today what we're doing is we're previewing the Carlton game versus Melbourne in what should be a nail bite this weekend. If you are new around here, please drop a like, please drop a subscribe. It means the world to me. We're well past a thousand now and it's only getting bigger. So really appreciate you joining me for the journey as we go through the AFL season. So if you are round, new round here, we're just going to preview the game as we usually do and we'll have a look a bit at the analytics, a little bit of my thoughts and uh, hopefully we can celebrate a count and dub. It seems a, a long time ago since we beat Melbourne and we'll quickly go into it. So Melbourne have been phenomenal this year. There's no getting away from it. They've been a very strong side, unbeaten, the only unbeaten side in the competition at the moment. And... They're playing a really good brand of football. And I think one thing that impresses me is that they're one of the top two ranked sides in the champs data measurement of pressure factor sides. But I think that doesn't tell the whole story about the Melbourne Demons. I think one thing that you're seeing from them is they're a real strongly equipped side. They're very disciplined. They're very, very tough to penetrate. And it's been a sign of the whole season. They're the top side in the comp. Uh, restricting opposition scoring and one thing they found quite easy to do is score themselves I think last week as well I think there's a telltale sign of how to beat them and they will be beaten no side goes unbeaten but one thing is is that the Swans are one of the top two sides in that pressure factor gauge that the champions data do and they had a real high 2.10 it was last week against them um, which was slightly higher than the Demons and the average throughout the year is 1.78 and it's really interesting to see when you see Melbourne that you've got to restrict their ability to find movement. They're very good at controlling the footy and it's something that they've really displayed really well this year. Now, Carlton is quite incidental because we talked last week, the last video about Carlton's pressure and it's very high in its defensive sets but its high to its bottom is really scary at times. And it's when we switch off, that's where the Demons come in. We saw that the quarter with the Demons as well against the Swans. When they slightly dropped off, that is where the Demons can gain the ascendancy. And once they're ahead, they're very accomplished at holding it. If we look at the raw data though, and I always think the raw data is a really good place to start when you look at the sides. There isn't any glaring differences. You look, obviously, Melbourne, they've won games. They've controlled the 40. Obviously, they've got slightly more on average, 20 possess 26 possessions more than us. But aside from that, everything looks pretty hunky-dory as you go down that list. Until you see that P word come in, the pressure, you can see that the tackles is higher there. And I think what is interesting as well is their ability to lock it in. You look at Carlton's inside 50s and theirs. There's only three in it. Scoring shots inside 50. It's pretty much the same, but their ability to really keep the ball inside 50 is really poignant. And um, you also see the intercepts there. Cow and I are a very decent intercept side. We, we're we killing at the moment, particularly Wheatering as well. You know, last week he really did have a good show. And this is where they hurt you. Their ability to intercept around the ground is really strong. And that's caused by their ability to enact pressure. Now, is it a hard job to beat Melbourne? No side is impossible to beat and no side is very hard to beat. It's one of them old adages. It's if you can apply it for long enough, because one thing we're seeing this year is with a longer game plan, we're starting to see a lot of swings in game anyway. It's very hard to do. Limited interchange bench. People get tired. It, it really is now becoming a war of attrition, a war of who can go for longer. And it's going to be interesting because... One of the stats we always look at, and it's one of the few stats in the AFL that really dictates success, and that is your ability to get metres gained. And you can see that 100 metres gained per game almost isn't, isn't huge, but it is huge in the grand scheme of things. In the terms of that if you actually look at the metres gained, it, it does correlate the AFL ladder almost accurately. And... It's going to be interesting if we can stop that because their ability to move the ball and gain meters from each possession is really poignant. And it does come into the fact that they do harbour the ball very well. There's a lot of players, if we look at key players, that are really worrying. One of them is Christian Petrarca. We know he's in sensational form at the moment and he doesn't really need introduction. He is their go-to guy. He's the number one inside 50 getter. 
um, in the competition. He's absolutely killing that at the moment. 7.1 inside 50s per game. It's it's mighty impressive. He's top 10 for meters gained. He's inside the top 20 for clearances. He's he, he's a formidable player. Top 11 as well for his ability to get the find the pill as well. And he's really dangerous over a goal a game. 0.5 goal assists. He, everything goes through him and he is a real stellar player. We saw it last week as well. 28 touches, 8 tackles and a goal. He's got the ability to really find something and he's a player that you're really going to have to look to stop because he comes from a real handy midfield. A really handy midfield. When you look at their players there as well, you've got Gorn who's been sensational this year as well. He really gets the delivery for them. You've got Langdon on the wing who's really, really a solid player really potent and can turn defence into attack very quickly and you know Clayton Oliver as well on the ball he's very superb he's very supreme these are the kind of players you want it's, it's the engine room it's kind of a very similar task to what we had against the doggies you've got to be first to the ball you've got to really enact pressure and we saw Calton do that in, fr in two three and a quarter quarters they did really well uh, really limiting the space and really making it hard once these guys get an accumulation of the ball, you find it's devastating. One thing that he's going to be reliant on, and whether TDK comes in or not, I'd imagine Pitonet does play, is Pitonet top three for hitouts per game he is, but 16th in hitouts to advantage. It is always a concern because their ability to shark opposition rook is phenomenal. Their ability to rove to their own rook is also exemplary. Um, it's going to be something that you're really looking at, really key, that matchup of how the midfield quartets really complement each other, including the rug. And it's something that we're going to be looking at our midfield to really up their pressure gauge. Cow and our top three in clearances in the league, but the problem is, is a lot of these clearances go straight to the opposition. And a lot has been talked about Mr. Paddy Cripps this, this week. We know that there's a rumour that he's going to sign a four-year deal. And... He's the number one clanger player in the competition, unfortunately. It's not the greatest thing, but he's still there. Top 20 score involvements, top 10 centre clearances per game, top 20 total clearances, top 10 total contested possessions. He's still got that thing, and we're starting to see a lot more handball from him. The problem with Cripps is he's really getting attacked hard. He's getting really attacked hard. And that is something that we're going to be looking for, Cripps to take them bodies and really give it off. I think Cripps suffers from we don't actually have a prominent wing. You look at um, Melbourne, Ed Langdon is really key to how they play. They get the ball out to him as quickly as possible on the contest. He gets off, he gets on his bike, he gets the early entries, and it really helps them out. And it's something that Cowton really haven't really developed that kind of game plan. I think that's more the fact that we don't have natural wingers. Everyone that plays there is kind of make do. The guy that we do have, though, that has really impressed me in recent weeks is none other than much mercurial, much maligned. The kind of guy that everyone gets on his case is David Cunningham. And Cunningham in the last couple of weeks has really, for me, shown something. Top five in goal assists per game, top 12 in score involvements. Um, he's had a really good 25-touch game against Essendon. We saw that format as two goals. And he's got the ability to be really creative. Now, I'm not saying he's our Christian Petrarca, but he's going to be that kind of guy that is looking to do that, looking to change the game, looking to take off, looking to take the game on. Cunning is, is someone I think can really, really look to affect the game and really enact a little bit of X factor. The other guy I'll be looking at is Sam Walsh, who for me has been Carlton's best player by above and beyond. And I'd have him top five in the comp at the moment this year. Sensational effort from him. Top 10 in score involvement. Top 12 in clearances. Top 10 in disposals. He's top five in effective clearances. Top 10 in stoppage clearances. He's really making a menace of himself. And he's kind of going to be our guy that we're looking to kickstart everything. Already this year, it's going to be someone that we're looking at. His, his ability to really work the ball and look to do the right thing is integral. Um, we saw in the fourth when the pressure came, they kind of took that outlet ball for Sam Walsh. And I feel like there wasn't enough movement for him because he's really good at finding the movement targets and creating links. He's a very good link player. He looks to make them change. He kind of reminds me when he gets going of kind of like, you know, Sam Mitchell in his prime, crossed with a little bit of Judd. It, it, but 
definitely the Sam Mitchell, the ability to keep the ball moving. The ball is always in motion with Sam Walsh. And he's always looking to make something happen. And that is integral to how Teague wants to play. We talk about the Carlton way and we don't quite know it. It is definitely missing that pressure to take it to the next level. But one thing is it relies on movement of the ball. The ball can't be static for too long. And he's a guy that's really interesting. What I am looking forward to this year, though, without a shadow of a doubt this game, is definitely seeing the battle of the back line. Stephen May versus Wheatering. It, it, it's phenomenal because May has been absolutely genius this year for Melbourne. He's really managed to lock opposition players down. We saw it last week as well. He was absolutely really another another level, wasn't he, last week, Stephen May. They, it was a real hard-fought game, but he absolutely shut Franklin out of the game. His ability to take the intercepts and get score launches as well down the back mirrors, really, Jacob Wheatering. I do think they're similar type of players. I think the only thing that separates them for me is their age. But Wheatering and him are two players that the ball, as we've seen from the stats, is going to spend a lot of time going inside 50. It's who here uses it well. Both of them are very good users of the football. Both of them look to take the game on. Both of them can turn defence into attack. And it's how Mackay, and it sounds like they're going to go a little bit taller. They're going to bring Wiedemann in to complement McDonald and Ben Brown. It's going to be really interesting, their matchups, because there's going to be a lot of opportunity because the ball will come in quite a lot for our defence to get it. And I think it's going to come down to your next best, you know, if you know what I mean. I think it's going to be the next best defenders there. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how, you know, Liam Jones, um, he performs this week. Um, for us because he's going to be taking the second fiddle and it's going to be interesting to see how Petty and particularly Lever that they respond because both sides play that similar three tall type three like two talls and a myriad tall it's going to be really interesting to see how they cope because I suspect that Levi is going to be there because it's his 150th count and love a story it's going to be really interesting because I think that's where it's going to come. I think May and Wittering will kind of take care of themselves. I think McKay and Brown, they'll kind of get there and thereabouts. They'll, they'll do their job. They're very talented players. We know Ben Brown does very well against Carlton. It's going to be really interesting. These matchups are going to be really key. You know, it's going to be interesting because Fritz is very dangerous up forward. You know, you've got that Langdon Brayshaw coming off the wing. Very dangerous as well in itself. It's all about creating structure, I think, for Cal. And for me, we lose this game if we go and try and control it. If we play that silly game of kicking down the wing, looking to slow it down. Our best hope is to really find that first pre-season type football. Of where I think our best form of defence is when we're attacking. When we're hungry for the ball, we're moving it quickly. You look at the numbers, the pressure's there because there seems to be an intent to get the game going. And that is how we hurt them. If you look at Sydney, very similar style of play. They go very hard. They go very early. And it's it's literally non-stop chaos. And it was very close. You saw St Kilda earlier in the season as well. They're another side that got within three goals. And that's what we're talking about. These guys punish sides and stop you scoring. They choke you. And I think the only way that you can stop that is you take the gloves off and you swing for the hills. It's going to be interesting. Do I want selection-wise? I, I, I really don't want to see Mark Murphy come into this. I want to see us back the players that have played. I'd like to see TDK come in as that extra rug option. And I think that would be a real handy addition with Hibbard, um, Hibbard Petty, May and Lever. It creates a little bit of a mismatch. They're very rhythmical defenders. I think if you can disjoint that rhythm, particularly with a lot of inter with a lot of swings in the midfield, I'd like to see Stocker get a go, him go up against Viney. It's they're up for the fight. They like the fight. But I think if you take the fight to them, they sometimes can get distracted by that. And I think that's really important for me. It's going to be a really good game. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough because the numbers do lead to a Melbourne win. Last five, they've won it as well. They have the wood on Carlton. But there's also this element, and I don't want to get into this because it's really non-technical, that you can't keep winning. They can't keep beating us and they can't keep winning. So it's, it's there for the taking. It's a scalp that's there. And I don't want to draw, do the line in the sand thing. But it is possible. But this is the kind of game where count and throw the gloves off. Don't throw air to caution and go hard. Because it's a game that we're not expected to win. You look at the bookies. They, they, they don't give count a chance. When it's over $3, it's okay. People say, no, it's only $3. 
the bookies are telling you something there. The money is with Melbourne. But go hard, go brave. And I think if we can somehow find them first two quarters against the Doggies and someone doesn't do that, Teague says it's the players. I personally think it's a bit of both. I think there is a coaching element there. Go hard. You've got a chance. It's going to be a really entertaining game. I'm looking forward to it. Let me know your score predictions. I'd love to know. And until next time, pop me out.